I recently decided to pick up a pair of Allen Edmonds Landon Cap Toe dress boots. Today we're going to discuss these boots from a quality to price viewpoint, how you can dress them up or a boot just like it in your wardrobe, and how comfortable they actually are when you're out there walking long distances. Let's get right into it. This is their Landon Capto dress boot. The color is a nice mahogany brown. The leather is a calfskin leather, so it's not a Chrome XL leather, it's not a rugged leather. It is a very shiny leather, similar to some of their other boots like the Allen Edmonds Daltons. It has a nice day-night sole right here, which day-night sole just wear forever. They, they last like four or five years of long walking on concrete streets. A nice stacked heel right there, very classic silhouette. A nice narrow toe box, meaning you can dress these up quite a bit. On the inside, they do have some cushioning. They're kind of like a mix between the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill and the Allen Edmonds Dalton. The Higgins Mill having a little bit of cushioning on the inside, the Dalton just having the cork layer and that's it. It's kind of like a mix, a nice mixture of the two, which makes these boots overall very comfortable. And of course, with any Allen Edmonds boots at this price point, you do have a good year weld construction. Just means that when the heel or the sole wears out, you can send them back to Allen Edmonds or shoe repair shop of choice, and you could just have them rip the worn sole out, and they can just re-sole or re-stitch a new sole onto the boot, rather than just going ahead and having to spend a couple of hundred dollars on a brand new pair of boots. So why did I buy these boots? Well, as far as nice, stylish, high quality men's boots, I do have a couple of options. I have my standard pair of Higgins Mill, you can see right here, don't wear these anymore. I have the waterproof Higgins Mill over what you're seeing right here. Don't wear these anymore either. When I wanna wear a nice classic traditional pair of men's boots, not any of my Cole Haan original Grand Wingtips or Chucka boots, I'm either reaching for the Thursday Captain and the Whiskey Storm King, which is a very nice boot, however, very casual, or I'm going for the Allen Edmonds Dalton Wingtip Dress Boot. If we take a look at the Allen Edmonds Landon that I just put in the middle and compared to these other two boots, we can start to see it's kind of a mixture between these two boots. If we put them side by side with the Thursdays, you could see it's practically the same silhouette. It could be mistaken as the same exact boot, just a different color. You can see even the toe box right there, very similar. But this one does have that nice shiny leather, which is where it shares the characteristic with the Dalton wingtip dress, but you can see right there, they are almost exactly the same color. But I wanted another option that was a little bit more dressy than the Thursday Captain, and that wasn't the wingtip boot. Since the wingtip boots are absolutely awesome, it's good to change it up, especially since a more plain toe or plain looking boot like the cap toe without the brogues can be dressed up a lot more. The Landon cap toe boot has the formality of the Allen Edmonds Dalton wingtip dress boot, and it has all the nice looking leather. That means it's gonna breathe well, while also sharing the same functionality and usability of the Thursday Captain boots. Of course, I wouldn't take these hiking, I wouldn't take these out to shovel snow, but if you've gotta walk and it's really bad weather, that day night outsole is not gonna give you any problems, and as long as you're not standing in a monsoon forever, this leather should be totally fine, as long as you do things like put shoe trees in them right away when you get home, and condition the leather from time to time. When it comes down to fit with these boots, I was a little bit concerned that they were going to be a little bit too narrow for me, since on the Allen Edmonds website, when you look up their lasts that they are on, it is a more narrower, narrow were last than the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill, which is a nice wide last. I'm happy to report that as soon as I put the boots on my feet, I had plenty of room in the toe box, almost too much room. But the nice thing about a pair of boots is you can cinch them up really tight around the ankles while leaving plenty of room if you need to wear thicker socks if it's super cold outside, or if your feet happen to be more swollen than usual, since one thing that I've learned is if you're walking for very long distances or if you're on your feet all day, your feet can swell up to a half a size, so it is always, always better to have more room in the toe box than less room in the toe box in my experience. And it goes without saying, but this being a dress boot is going to make it a lot more versatile than a casual only boot or a super rugged work boot. Those boots like the Iron Ranger or even the, even something like the Thursday Captain and the Whiskey Storm King, while the rugged workwear inspired boots like this, again, this is not a work boot, this is a more of a fashion boot, while these boots are absolutely awesome, they could be super comfortable, they could look amazing with jeans and casual chinos, 
they don't stand a chance when you wear a nicer outfit like what I'm wearing, or if you even start to dress it up to a more casual or formal suit, whereas these, they can go all the way up to business casual or whatever is above business casual, I'm not really sure. The only thing that would be a little bit more dressy than this would be if you had them in an all black, or if you just stepped it up straight to a black dress shoe, black whatever, black cap toe Oxford. And of course, check it out, they work amazingly with this outfit that I have on for this video, light blue polo shirt with a nice collar, navy blue merino wool v-neck sweater, nice khaki colored five pocket chinos, Levi's 511 with the medium brown belt matches perfectly with the mahogany, almost forgot the color, for, almost forgot the color mahogany, not Dalton's, Landon cap toe dress boot. Well, during filming that sequence, I just found out that I have a hole in my sweater right here. That absolutely sucks. I don't even wear these sweaters that often. I guess I either have to stitch it up or I'll just take it to a seamstress and they'll fix it. it sucks, but what are you going to do? Now, how about the comfort of these boots? Well, I'm happy to report that they are very comfortable. They are a little bit stiff starting out, but as you can see, I've already worn them a couple of times just for walks around the neighborhood. And I've also, you know, obviously wore them around the house just to make sure that they were okay. And the comfort, the underfoot comfort is very good. It's almost as good as the Allen Edmonds Daltons. I would say 95% there, but it is miles better than the Higgins Mill and it is miles better than some of my other dress shoes that I have, obviously. So I'd have no issues wearing these all day, walking around New York City, Manhattan, taking the train, standing, not any issues at all. Now, I do want to mention that the break-in process isn't necessarily painless. We usually isn't with any boots. You do get quite a bit of stiffness up around the ankle area. And for me in particular, with my left foot, it did start to get a bit sore up here. It's almost as if my the, the front of my ankle right here, where it, transi where it transitions from the foot to the shin, I found a lot of pressure points here. I do have a thinner ankle on my left side, meaning that I have to cinch them up tighter around my left foot than I do on my right foot or my left ankle rather than my right ankle. I didn't have any issues with the ankle or with anything over here. The right foot, right boot rather, felt totally fine. The left boot, I did start to feel a bit of pressure points. This is starting to go away, but it is something that I wanted to mention. Just to make sure you have your expectations set, since most of the time, if you're wearing a pair of nice boots, they are going to be stiff and you are going to experience a little bit of discomfort on breaking. But you shouldn't have any blisters, any pinching, anything like that, and that's where I had no problems at all with these boots. The underfoot comfort, overall comfort of the boot, the room and the toe box, absolutely fine. Let's continue the discussion of comfortable shoes. Let's say you need to dress up to with a suit and tie the whole nine yards. You're gonna have to wear something like this, a proper dress shoe from maybe let's say Allen Edmonds. You probably don't have the exact same shoe that I have. Maybe you have something like a Black Park Avenue like I used to have. This is gonna be great. However, your feet are gonna hurt if you're like me. These are not the greatest for walking longer than two or three miles, which is about an hour of walking. Your feet are gonna start to be bothering you. You also have something that's a little bit more comfortable, like the Beckett Simonon, Beckett Simonon Kent Wingtip Derby. Open lacing means less pressure points. The shoe, almost said the boot, the shoe does have a lot more room, but just take a look at the side profile. These are a bit too chunky when compared to the Oxford. I gotta hide my face so that the camera doesn't see me. Check it out. These definitely do look nice, but they are a very chunky dress shoe, and I would say they're a casual shoe only. So you really can't wear these much past a pair of khakis and a sport coat. Even with a casual suit, if it's a slim fit suit, these won't look quite right. You could go the route that a lot of people go and wear something like a hybrid shoe, but honestly guys, as much as I love my hybrid shoes, they do not hold a candle to a proper shoe like the McAllister. I mean, just take a look at the difference. If you're wearing a suit, of course, this one is the shoe you should go for. However, the comfort is not going to be anywhere near as good on this one as it will be on this one. But just look at the wrinkles in the Cole Haan hybrid shoe. Overall, it's just a cheaper shoe. And when you're wearing it with a suit, these were only designed to be worn in casual situations. So when you need something that has the comfort of a hybrid dress shoe, but the formality and the classic timeless style of a traditional dress shoe, this is where a dress boot like the Allen Edmonds Landon Capto comes in clutch. It has that nice 
classic, timeless style. It's very sleek. It's very sophisticated. And I forgot the other word, very elegant looking. It's not big and bulbous like the Beckett Simonon wingtip. Beckett Simonon wingtip that I showed you. It's slimmer than that. It looks miles better, again, since it is a proper dress shoe inspired dress boot than when compared to something like a Cole Haan sneaker, dress shoe hybrid, whatever the whatever they want to call this thing nowadays. It, it doesn't even know what it is, an identity crisis. But it's going to maintain the comfort level of something like this and get you 95% there. You're not going to get that cushy outsole, that cushy rubber sneaker-like outsole, but it is going to be a lot, a lot more comfortable than something like a McAllister. This is where dress boots really excel. And I would say that if you are wearing dress shoes all the time and your feet are killing you, and you just had to throw the towel in and get a pair of Cole Haan original brands like this, I would urge you to try to find a pair of either these or something just like it. But something like this or the Dalton or just a boot in general that has a bit more of a thicker sole is going to do a lot better for you if you have foot problems or if you have any sort of comfort issues, if you're on your feet a lot or you got to walk a long time. That's the initial overview and the first look of the Allen Edmonds Landon Capto boot. Like I said, let me take a look at and let me and let me take a look at how much they are on their website right now. Time of filming this video, the Landon Capto boot is $299. That's actually a pretty decent deal. I think I paid around $299 or $350 somewhere in that ballpark. $329 probably when I bought them back in the Rediscover America sale at the beginning of October. And speaking of price, I recently got this comment I'll throw up on the screen right over here saying, if the uh, Allen Edmonds Landon is $250 and the Thursday Captain is $200, which one would I recommend? I ended up answering it saying that if you could only have one and you want to get a nice boot that's going to last you a lot longer and you're not just going to beat the hell out of it, wear it in the rain and snow consistently, then definitely the Landon Cap Toe boot is going to be your better bet at the price of $250 since it's only $50 more than the Thursday Captain. However, if you've already got a couple of nice pair of shoes and you're just looking for a pair of shoes or a pair of boots rather, that you can wear in wet weather, you can wear in the snow, you can snow shoveling, you don't have to worry about it. A beater pair than the Thursday Captain is going to be your best bet. It is going to be a little bit better on the comfort level on this so far. Again, we have to test more of that. If I could only have one, I'd probably go with the Landon Capto just because it's more important to me to have something that I can dress all the way up. It's going to cover a lot more bases. And then I would just do things like wear it over shoe or wear a galosh over this. It's going to be a much cheaper option just so that if I do end up wearing them in the rain or the snow, I don't totally destroy them. But it is nice that you don't have a leather sole here. So these would be my pick. However, for my wardrobe, I would have both of these. Some other alternatives to the Dalton, not the Dalton, the Landon Capto would be the Thursday Captain, not in this color, but they make it in some nicer leathers with a day night inspired outsole. The brown color is nice. I had those for a while. They were too dark for me. I would get them in brandy, which I think looks absolutely awesome. Those are going to be the same price, $200, but they're going to look a lot nicer. You're going to be able to dress them up a lot more than the more casual version like you see right here. And also Beckett and Simonon make some great shoes. Here I have the Kent Wingtip Derby. I don't wear this one that much, especially since we're here approaching winter in the Northeast. This one is also a bit too bulky for me. That is not their fault. That's my fault for not looking at pictures closely when I was looking at the shoes, but they do make this one in a wingtip or in a boot version rather called the Nolan Brogue boot, which comes up to here. That is the shoe that I would get if I lost my Allen Edmonds Dalton, since the Daltons, the Allen Edmonds Daltons were actually discontinued, I would definitely pick up a pair of the Nolan Brogue boots, which is this exact shoe, just in a boot version, meaning it's going to give you a much better closure and give you better comfort while also being more casual and just as dressy. So there you go, initial overview of the Allen Edmonds Landing Cap Toe boot. But looking at this boot for a long time, very psyched that I got it. Check them out, see what price they are, depending on what time you're watching this video or what date you're watching this video, the price is going to fluctuate probably between $300 and $500. And as always, thanks for watching.